Hey, so, hi. We got a little distracted um, by yarn. We actually have a sales rep um, that I've been doing some work with and Kate and I were just talking about it as we sent him out to get us lunch. Anyway, hi and welcome. I'm Linda Daniels and this is Lunch with Linda, um, live on Facebook and on YouTube. And if you're not with us live, you know you can watch us later. This is Northampton Wools and um, I'm really glad that you guys are here to join us today. We've got some fun things to talk about. Um, it is Juneteenth, Juneteenth celebration today. Um, I hope you get a chance to do something to recognize the significance of today. Um, the whole purpose of Juneteenth is to recognize the very last slaves in Texas that were finally given their freedom um, back then, two years after the Emancipation Proclamation. So we are happy to have this day and to celebrate and to recognize the um, places that we have been as well as the places that we are going and hopefully make our world better in the long run. If you are here, hi Linda. Um, thank you so much, Linda. Hi Decker. Say hello so that I know you are here. I may not always say hello to everybody. It depends on how deep into my talking I am. We're glad to see you, even if I don't say hello to you. Hi, Bess. So I'm going to start right away with kind of where I left off last week. I am going to talk about my shawl, but toward later on towards the end. Last week, I told you that we had gotten something in that we sold out of right away and that I immediately reordered them. And I know you've all been dying for today to happen um, so that you can find out what they are. And I am here to tell you that we did get an or the order in. And what they are are stitch stoppers um, from Fox and Pine. They are a rubbery kind of thing in all of these really fun shapes. So we've got fox, we have avocados. I'll show them to you quickly. Cactuses, you get two in a package. We have blue sheep and llama heads. We have strawberries and white sheep, lots and lots of fun. I think these are llamas as well, pink llamas. Fun little stoppers. So what's the big deal? Well, the feature is that they do come in lots of different colorful, fun shapes. Number two, they're a pretty good size. And so what does that mean for you? It means that they're easy to see um, they don't slip to the bottom of your bag, and if they do, you can actually feel them um, if you're down in there hunting for something. And they have holes in both the top and the bottom. There's a hole in the top of it right there, and there's a hole in the bottom of it. So even though you only get two in a package, you can actually use them um, to stopper four needles, two different sets of needles. The fit, according to the packaging, they fit from size 2 up to 15, and I'm going to prove that to you right now. This is a size 5 needle, and it fits right into that hole, and when you press it down, it stays secure. It's not coming off. And I've when I tried these earlier, I sometimes got it to make a little pop, but not this time when I took them off. So that's a size 5 needle. I did actually grab a size one needle because I like, really? Two? But honest to God, the size one needle is oh, too small. That's a skewer. It really is. It really does start at size two. So anything below a size one will not work. Um, Kate, Jen says hold the white sheet for her, okay. please. Got it. Then, so the size five works, the size one doesn't. I grabbed a size nine and that fits right on there as well and doesn't come off. And then I said, all right, we got to try the big ones. So here is a size 11. Same thing. And 
And even though it said 13, oh. I'm nothing if not a skeptic. <laughs> That's why. I grabbed a 15 and tried that. And it fit in there. Oh. And it fit in there enough so that it would protect your stitches from falling off. Why do you need that? If you travel a lot with your knitting, and I don't mean like travel, travel, I mean just carry your knitting around in a bag. Um, who hasn't reached into your bag, grabbed your knitting only to discover that the stitches have come off the end? And for a lot of us, that's not so scary, but for many people, it is very scary. And it can always mean a dropped stitch if you don't get all of them back on. So these are going to stop that from happening because they are good and solid on there. They, you can use them for all different sizes. It doesn't change. If you use it for a size eight, you'll still be able to use it for a size four. If you stick the 15s in there, you'll still be able to use it for a size nine. It doesn't stretch out of shape. Um, so they're usable over and over and over again. And the other thing that I discovered was because they have two holes, guess what? Oh. Both of your circular needles <gasps> will go into one of them. Amazing. Brilliant, right? Yes. Isn't that brilliant? And then so easy, easy to pick up and pull out of your bag with all of that knitting on it. You will not do this inadvertently and have all of your stitches oh, I've come done that off. So many, times. so many times. So we've got fun shapes. We've got a good supply in. So Bess, uh, what color llama? Um, so I'm gonna while I keep talking, keep I'll have Kate um, kind of go through there. There are the white llama heads. There are. I, I think these are llamas, but they also kind of look sheep sheepish, but I think they're llama because of the blanket on them. Um, and those are pink. And then we have, oh my gosh, these are so fun, little sloths. Yeah. See those guys? And we have flamingos like that as well. Um, and we all, oh yeah, we do. We do have two penguins, two sets of penguins. As well so they're really really fun they are on the website so you can purchase them on the website Jen we've got your the one you wanted um, Bess wants an avocado and a llama you're seeing it okay so we'll make sure that we pull those if you want them um, and put this, them aside for you and you can um, pick them up or give us uh, send us an email or give us a call oh, later Bess on wants a sloth. Got it. I got it guys okay so Kate's going to watch the comments and be able to um, take care of you if you want something. If you don't want to decide now, if you want to see them in person, they're here. Uh, we will put aside the ones that people order and they are on the website. If they sell out right away, I will reorder them right away as well. Um, it, re it took her about 10 days to get the order to me. So um, we will, if... You say you want a llama and they're already sold out. We will make sure that we get more of those in uh, because they're really fun and so practical. I don't usually use needle stoppers, but I'm using these because they are really, really fun. Um, the only problem that you will have is other knitters who want them <laughs> and sneak them or kids. Be careful with kids around because they're going to love playing with them. Um, and be really attracted to them as well. So be a little bit careful with that. So last week also I showed you the yarn that we got from Fiber Shed. This is the local yarn from three local farms, from Leiden Glen Farm, from Cold Spring Farm, and from Freeman Farm. It's the Western Mass Fiber Shed Council that gathers yarn from fleece from those three places and has it processed into um, yarn. Sally, they do have cupcakes, but they were not available right now. They also coffee cups. So I will reorder as soon as they um, stock them again. They will have cupcakes. Yeah, I'm gonna talk about the shawl rosemary in a minute. But this is the, like I said, the fiber shed yarn. It only comes in natural and I started knitting with it. I am knitting the bookish cardigan by Annie, let me see, I wrote her name down. 
where they write it down. right there in the middle of my paper. Annie Lupton, it is a paid pattern on Ravelry and I wanna show you my progress so far. When I first saw this cardigan on Ravelry, I fell in love with it and couldn't wait to start knitting it. It is knit flat, number one. So you're knitting five pieces, a back, two fronts and two sleeves. And I know everything now is top down and in the round and um, make short rows, but I am old school. I gotta say, I really enjoy knitting pieces because I also enjoy the putting together. So I was really, really happy to see this done in a very traditional manner. manner. Yes, there are bobbles, Bonnie, bobbles. So many people say, ugh, bobbles. But I have to tell you, these are fun bobbles. Um, she does have a video for how she makes bobbles, but I also have a very particular way that I make bobbles. And I'm going to do a little video of how I make the bobbles and put it up on our YouTube so you'll be able to see it without actually having to um, take a class because I have a little trick at the end two tricks actually. One is knitting back backwards so that you don't have to constantly flip the piece and the other is a wrap at the end that pulls the bobble to the front. A lot of times if you've ever made bobbles you know one of the main problems is they tend to push to the back but I have a little trick that I've been doing um, that keeps them from falling to the back so they stay right on the front. So this is a pattern that is charted, but I will tell you this, once you have the patterns established and once you have gone through a full repeat, it's pretty, um, it makes sense. You can see where the cables are supposed to go, where, where each of the stitches is supposed to go. So you're not completely dependent upon the chart. And if you are working from on on your iPad or um, computer, when you download a pattern in the Word, up at the top of the pattern, they have something called highlight, a highlight pen. And that's what I'm using to keep track of what row I'm on on the chart. I simply um, set it and then every time I touch something on the screen, it turns it yellow. And so I can keep track, I can cross off the entire row and I can um, then know exactly where I am with the chart. Hi, Tina. Yeah, I'm gonna talk about the shawl at the end. So I recommend doing that. If you are a big iPad or, or computer user rather than working with printed patterns, you will really, I love that highlighting feature because it it lets me keep track really easily of, of where I am. So that's the bookish cardigan. I'm gonna be working on this. It I have to say, it's been a long time since I've done anything this complicated. And not that any of these individual patterns are difficult, they're not. But you are doing more than one thing at a time. There are more than four patterns going on at the same time. So you are paying attention. This is pay attention knitting. But it's been so long since I've done anything like that. I was so satisfied. I, I almost can't describe the feeling. It felt so good to finally do something a little bit harder than all of the other things that I have been doing lately. So if you're ready for a challenge, a little bit of work, then I'm gonna highly recommend this one. And in this fiber shed yarn, it's just perfect. I am on a size five needle, which is what the pattern recommends, getting the five stitches to an inch. So it's going to be um, exactly best. It's not beach or baseball knitting. It's going to be a lightweight sweater in that traditionally the cabled sweaters are done in air and weight yarn, which makes them very heavy and very stiff feeling. This is not going to be that. It's much more supple, um, but still give you the, the look and the feel and the enjoyment of knitting something a little bit harder. So that is what I'm working on right now. 
Kate and I were talking the other day when I started this. This is a crocheted shawl, and this is called the Mulberry Wine Shawl. It is a free pattern on Ravelry. I'm gonna show you the Ravelry page right here. By In the, um, in the Garden. Can you see any of that? Am I in the right place? Um, so it's a free pattern, but it is not a free download. It's d a pattern that she wrote on her blog. And so when, oops, when you go to follow the directions, you have to scroll through a lot of um, stuff to actually pull out the pattern. The annoying stuff is the ads that show up between all of the directions. But once you have begun the pattern you get up to row 19 the pattern from then on is just a repeat of rows 9 through 18 and i'll show you the shawl in real life isn't that pretty i'm really really happy with how it came out she also does a lot of pictures so if you are not that great a crocheter or a beginner crocheter it's just a basic double crochet stitch throughout the whole thing with some chains in between, you will be able to see what it is she's telling you to do by looking at the pictures. The other thing I love about this is that it's got nice big holes so I can, when I wear it, pull the end through and that with not without using a shawl pin, there That's it cool. is. Isn't it cool? Mm -hmm. Okay. So what yarn did I use? I used a yarn that I've talked about before. You can do it in either the Nuance, this is the one that I used, or the Impress. So this is, the Impress is a cotton and soy blend, and then the Nuance is a, here it is, this is 100% organic cotton. So it's a gradient yarn, and you can see on the skeins what the colors are in the skein. I used almost two skeins, but what I did was, I, it starts up here in the green, and I started from the center of the ball for this color. And I got all the way, oh. <laughs> I thought it wouldn't, I thought I finally had it down, but I don't. Okay, I got all the way into the purple on that first skein of yarn. And then I knew I wanted it bigger because I wanted a nice big shawl. You could stop there. It will be a scarf-like, uh, a kerchief-like shawl with one skein. But I knew that I wanted to make it bigger. I wanted to wear it dramatic like this. And so the second skein, I started from the outside and then continued. And I think it really, I'm gonna take it off again. It really, I think, came out nicely balanced. When you started the outside, was it purple? Yes. Okay. So when you look at the skeins, so I find two the same, they are wound the same. And so skein number one, I started from the middle and went all the way out. And then skein number two, I started from the outside mm -hmm. and worked towards the inside. Mm -hmm. So you can do the same thing with knitting. There are plenty of knit patterns that um, will give you the same kind of look. Just use the gradients in that fashion, especially when they are wound the same. Now some gradients, um, like Freya Fiber, she winds her skein so that one skein is in this order and then she winds the second skein in the opposite order. So you could do it without thinking. Mm -hmm. But if you wanna try a nice weight, cotton weight, either 100% cotton or the cotton and the soy, this is the yarn to do, to do it with. We've got enough probably to sell a few more times and then it's gone. That will be it. It won't be around um, anymore. But I love the it's colors, so they're so pretty. Even there are two colors that are really subtle. This one, and this one is the um, cotton and soy, the impress. And then this one. That one's called very strawberry. How cute. Very strawberry. Mm -hmm. So if you don't want a lot of color, there's the, those options. And then there are like that turquoise that I showed you, some real colorful options as well. So when I was talking to Kate and started this, this is the beginning of the story, I'm back to it. Um, <laughs> 
I said that I wanted to make a shawl quick to to take to the show because I leave, I'm going to tell you about the show in a minute, but um, because it, I'll be in an air conditioned building all day long, and you know sometimes that can get chilly, but I didn't want a sweater. I want to be able to wear something um, over a dress that will just keep my shoulders. And the only way to really get it done was to crochet it. And we talked about um, how during the summer, it's almost like I crave crocheting. Yeah. I crochet, but not as much as I knit, obviously. But um, I knit so much that I never have the urge to knit because I always knit. But I have the urge to crochet every once in a while, and especially more in the summer because the projects are light, they're very fast, um, and it's really very satisfying to get a piece done. So Kate was saying that she felt the same way, that um, it's fun to have that little urge to do yeah. something quick. And, it, and, what, I, and that's when I have like a knit blank, a crochet blanket. Crochet really. blanket is a great idea, yeah. baby or Pick not. Pick up the blanket and get yeah. that satisfying round. Get done. it done, mm -hmm. get it done. So. That is what I wanted to tell you about this week. I leave tomorrow morning. Um, no, actually I leave in the afternoon for Chicago for the H&H trade show, which I'm very excited about. Usually you hear me talk about going to a TNA show, TNNA, the National Needlework Association, which I have gone to for years and years and years. Um, but when COVID hit, TNNA fell apart. We haven't had a show in two years. So this is one that I'm really looking forward to as, a, as well as um, many other shop owners that I know as well are looking forward to it. What is it? It is the trade show for shop owners to go to where all of the companies will have their new yarns, their new patterns um, out on the tables for temptation and we try to make decisions about what things you will want to knit with, what things we think you should know about, and what yarns we want to have in the store. It's going to be overwhelming because I have not had an opportunity to see all of the companies like this in a couple of years. So I really am going to have a lock on my pocketbook <laughs> until I'm absolutely <laughs> sure. So. Um, Bonnie is coming up from Florida and going to meet me there and my friend Eileen who does a lot of knitting for the shop for the shop is also going to meet me there and between the three of us we're going to take a look at everything and try to make some intelligent decisions on what new yarns we want to bring in I told you there's a sales rep here he's we sent him outside to sit on the bench mm -hmm. while I do this and when he comes back in I'll be finishing it up finishing up an order with him. And that's usually how I buy the yarn, but there are really only a few companies that I feel confident enough in and trust enough to be able to do that. So we're, we're going to be able to see a lot of new companies when we are there, a lot. I mean, that's a relative term. There aren't gonna be hundreds of new companies, but there are going to be some smaller companies that don't necessarily have sales reps that I'm going to make it a point to visit and see. So I will be at, at the show from Tuesday through Friday night. We don't come back until late Friday night. There, in addition to all of the looking and buying, there are lectures and classes that I will be going to. There's a local yarn store meetup where um, a bunch of yarn shop owners will gather together and maybe have a cocktail or two and um, kind of loosen up and get to know each other, see how our businesses compare, what trends we are seeing happening right now and what we expect to be happening in the fall. This is a big deal. It's the only trade show um, for our industry that happens only once a year. I am going to do a lot of posting. I'm gonna keep you guys kind of in the loop. I might even have a chance to do a lot this kind of live a couple of times um, and I might be able to do it on the floor and if not I might even just do it from our hotel room that night. We'll mostly be inside. It's my first time in Chicago but um, there isn't a lot of time to really explore the city unfortunately. We will you know be having dinner out 
every night, but then we're so exhausted after being on the show floor all day long that we kind of go back to the hotel room, um, make a martini, and then fall into bed. So my big dilemma is what knitting do I bring? <laughs> I, I, the temptation when I travel is always to pack a suitcase full of knitting, but this is not that kind of trip. It is a work trip where I will be on my feet and um, talking to people for most of every day. So there will be short times for knitting in the plane and in the room at night when we start to talk and um, really play with things. Like I said, I've been going to the show for a very long time and one year in particular, I did not bring any knitting. I was working for Manos del Uruguay in their booth and really didn't think I would have any time. And I'll tell you, it was like going through a withdrawal. <laughs> I could not believe I didn't have anything to knit. I actually had to run around and try to find somebody who would sell me a pair of needles. It's not a buying their show. So it was really hard to actually get some needles and oh some gosh. yarn because they weren't supposed to do that. Never again. So I will never again travel anywhere without at least some um, little project. So I will be going home today looking for that little thing. Oh, good, Eileen is bringing the Easy V. Um, I sent a couple of, of new models for, to Eileen. The Easy V is so beautiful. So first of all, I know she has the ranunculus done. We're going to have a new ranunculus in the shop. And the Easy V, I can't wait to see it, Eileen. All right, you guys. So our, our the shop will be open at regular hours. It will be Kate and Adrian and Dahlia on Saturday um, who will be here to take care of you. And um, I hope you come by because we just put up a great summer window. Um, so I hope you have a chance to look at that. Look for me. Look for our posts. Look for the lives because I might even be asking your opinion. And it will be very, very meaningful and important for me to hear you say yay or nay to something that I'm thinking about. Although I'll tell you, it will be very hard for you to say nay because yeah. new yarn always looks so intriguing and inviting. So in the meantime, you guys, uh, I want you to spend this week and go knit something and look for me and I am sure I will have fun. I'm crossing my fingers that there's nothing wrong with our flight. It is one of those short hops between Hartford and Chicago and hopefully we don't have any problem there. So enjoy the week. It's going to be a beautiful summery week and really go knit something. Bye everybody.